Yo, what's up? <laughs> what's good, dog? Cool and yourself? Nah, we chilled, we chilled. We see, we see you're a busy guy these days. Yeah, I know. Just pushing the mission. Yeah, boy. Trying yeah. to make things happen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So for those people watching who've been living under a rock, who are like, yo, who is this? Explain <laughs> I mean, there's a to, lot the, of to this. the people who you are. Firstly, what, what is your government name? All right, so... For all those that don't know, my name is Tumelo Tando Wushematewula, mm-hmm. formerly known as Tweezy or Tweezas the God or Tweezy Wabandwana or Swega Dead or Jangalala Superstar. And yeah, I'm a 23 year old music producer, composer, songwriter, artist, uh, visual artist, overall creative. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice summary. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so for this part of the interview, you're just gonna get into like your early life. You know, how did you get into the whole the whole music industry? Because I believe we did when we did our research, you you started in two thousand and eight. Yeah, not correct. So just to, uh, just to walk us through that process. What what happened? Um, why were you in the room busy making beats while other kids were out there playing and stuff? Yeah, um, I started producing in two thousand and eight. I think I was in grade nine. Um, I was studying at the NSA doing visual arts. So okay. at the time, when I was very visual, I was very artsy fartsy, you know. <laughs> so I used to be in Hostel Vele with a friend of mine called Mondli Slice Meli. Shout out to them. So um, Mondli was the only guy who had a computer Vele in Hostel. Okay. So we used to chill there for entertainment. He played the music. He played the music videos, the movies. That was our entertainment room. Mm. So one day Vele, while we're hanging out, Meli comes through and says, yo, gents, I've got this new game. This game, really, you can make music, you can do your own album, whatever, whatever. So we're like, no, it's landed in. And then eventually we started playing this game. And then we figured out, okay, this is not a game. We're actually making music out here. Uh. So me being a person that's just interested in a whole lot of things and developing tandizi, do you know? <laughs> so I was just like, yo, let me learn about this thing. Went to the net. Mm. Did some research and I found out Vele was okay. This is music producing software, mm. and Vele just produces like Timberland, uh, every other producer, and you're just using the software. So I learned about the software, I just introduced myself into the whole production world, and then sooner or later, I was just this guy that's a producer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, your and your, your, your friends, did they kind of drop off on it, or you kind of just the only one pushing with it? Like, yo, Doug, like keep on pushing these things like oh, what was were you guys producing together what was the whole thing well the whole thing was just a hobby and an entertainment thing mm. you know so in the beginning obviously we had these young competitions where we'd better like five clipper five clipper best beats wins all that money uh. of course i made all the money because <laughs> really i learned special tricks from the nets and stuff yeah, yeah so yeah. eventually everyone just got bored from the game because it felt like they felt like okay we're just stuck in the same place Okay. I mean, I knew it's okay, there's always something to learn, so I mm. kept pushing. Eventually, I'd play people my beats when everyone is busy being social at school. Mm. I just come through, yo, what do you think of this beat? Go oh, to a oh. hand out there, yo, baby girl, <laughs> listen to this <laughs> thing, what you think? And everyone was just like, ah, this is whack, man, what's this now, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, time went on. I used to even take some, uh, there's this producer from the States called Vibe Beats, man. Shout mm. out to Vibe Beats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of my inspiration thingy sources, you know? Um, at the time, he was like, yo, Vele, his beats were driving the whole industry crazy, mm. you know? So it got to a point where in my life I just stole his beats. Well, I download his beats and then I go to the homies and be like, "Yo, check out this beat. I made this beat." Uh, yeah. And people would go back because this was like top standard yeah. quality. 808s weren't even popular then. He had the 808 on lock, mm. so people would go crazy and say, "Yo, choose your beats are ill." Now. Then a friend of mine, Dante, shout out to Dante. He knew about vibe too, so he came through one day. It's like, oh. So you made that beat, nah? <laughs> okay, no, shout out to you. Uh, I guess Vele also made this beat. How did I get this? And then he exposed me, of course. And then, yeah. yeah. I was the clown for some time. And then, yeah. <laughs> so did you did you have the, 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 the producer standard at that time, the, the sound click account and, and all of that? Or? The problem with me getting a sound click uh, account was that I didn't have a credit card. Mm. But then I went to, that, that's when I was introduced to SoundCloud. Because okay. obviously when you when you type sound click 
and then when you shine the CL, it auto corrects and yeah, says cloud. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe this is it. Then I saw free account. What, 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 what? So I was like, ah, okay, let me get out with SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. from there, that's where I started uploading the beats and then started pushing the grind from there. Yeah. Okay, so you're at the NSA, right? Yeah. So you finish up. What What's the plan now? What 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 are What are the parents saying? What are you saying? Are you saying you want to go to study further? Well, at this point, in like 2010, mm. like two years after villagers pushing this grind and whatever as a hobby, I got introduced to. I moved to Park Town actually. Because Vela, my sister just got a place there. It was more convenient for me to go to school five minutes away. Right, right. You right. know? So, uh, within this period, I bumped into a very good friend of mine. His name is Elliston Play. Mm. Shout out to Elliston. Um, we went to church together mm. at Berea Baptist. So, this one time we were having like a youth white white at church. And this other lady called Catherine uh, had a MacBook. And we MacBook this uh, software called GarageBand. Yeah, yeah. So she had a e MacBook behind me, laying around. Yeah, mm. So me not being a person that's not busy, <laughs> went to the MacBook. Oh snap, GarageBand! I now I'm busy making beats now. I'm playing with the guitars, or whatever, whatever. Elliston shows up. He's like, "Yo, you make beats." I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Yo, I rap." I'm like, "What?" A beat maker, rapper, <laughs> let's do our thing. Uh, so it's like, yeah, I've also got a PC. Velo, what software do you use? Free loops. Yo, let's link up at my place. Let's make things happen. I'm like, cool. After church, Velo will go to his pausey. He's got a young Pentam 3 at his crib. He's got that microphone, earphone, shandy set up call center there. Yeah, boy, he's like, yeah, this is where the heat is cooked uh, out. Yeah, boy. So I eventually we do our first song. And then that same day, it's just like, yo, I've got a couple of friends I want to introduce you to. Okay. He introduces me to a good friend of mine, Muto, Shakes, EJ, uh, Sebastian, Lady Lee. And mm. then we introduced ourselves amongst each other. And then eventually we figured, yo, let's start a group. Let's call it Ghetto Prophecy. Yeah, boy. So now we are a boy band plus one girl. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Pushing the mission. You had, you had you had you had the look. You had the crew. We had the crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now I, we do our thing. We do our thing. We do our thing. So we used to like sell these plants. This was an idea Sebastian had because he was the hustler in the crew. Mm-hmm. He used to like make these artificial roses. Okay. I don't know. It was quite creative, man. Like he take p- a piece of paper, dye it like red or something. I don't know how he did it, but he come up with like an artificial rose mm. that smells good. Mm. And then we went and we sold that in the streets for like five rand, ten rand, love. Okay. And we made about a thousand rand wow. from selling those roses, man. So shout out to that guy. He had a really genius idea. I think you've just given people watching the video an idea. Yo, <laughs> if you don't have money, try that out, man. That's that's like an avenue to go through, you know? Yeah. Um. So with this thousand rand, of course, we bought studio time because we didn't have the facilities. Mm. But we knew because when we recorded with this Mike Shandy's lesser call center, we were like, you know what? <laughs> we're not sounding as good as Little Wayne or Tia yeah, yeah, so yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. You know? So like, no, let's go to a studio. Let's pay the money so we can sound as good as these guys. Mm. So I had the beats on lock, you know, mm-hmm. that we had the studio time. We did our thing, had good songs. So eventually we just go to like local pubs and perform. We built traction, people loved our songs. Eventually, we were on YFM now. I, our Jeez. song was playing on YFM. Next thing, uh, we had this song called Oh My. Uh, but then at that time, a couple of the crew members really fell off because they didn't believe in the dream and they were just like, ah, mm. this is too much work, you know? Yeah. So there was about four of us now, just uh, me, Buto, Shakes, EJ. But, but wait a minute, I mean, this this must have been a rush. I mean, I know you, you're talking about this, I mean, were you, was it just like, yo, okay, this is what, what I expected to happen? Or was it more like, yo, this is crazy? This is still a hobby for me at this time, man. Still a hobby. You know, but out of passion, you know, you just find a way to prioritize for what you love doing opposed to what you're supposed to do. Mm. I mean, at the time, I'm supposed to be going at school, I mean, going to school, but... Because I'm so passionate about the music and I really love this thing and I just want to learn so much more about it. I'm just forced to like, it's like every after school I must go to Buto's place or sometimes I ditch school. I'm not advising people to ditch school, go to school, you know, but out of passion, you know, I was just yeah. like, yo, it's okay, school can miss me today, let me just go. 
And then eventually Vele things started coming together. Now we've got a song out, we're charting at YFM, number 16 highest chart. We're charting on Metro. Now there's like young traction and young fame yeah. So that's I'm that guy at school, you know. Yeah. Eventually and we were starting out, so we weren't really that famous, but we we had like a young buzz. Mm. So we push on eventually, one of my homies goes to jail. Now there's wow. three of us, you know, and then wow, okay. now we keep pushing the grind, you know. Now my, my sister used to have a problem with me doing production because obviously I'm an SMS of me not going to school would go to her phone fairly mm. and she'd come complain. So eventually when she saw why I was missing school, she started understanding, it's okay, no, this guy is hustling something. No, let's see where this goes. Mm-hmm. So eventually, yeah, we push, we push and then she's like, okay. We see you on TV, you're a young mega or some sort. <laughs> but now where's the money? Where's 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 the yeah, where's the benefit mm-hmm. of the art? You know? So now she's just like, look man. Or oh, eventually I matriculate and then now Vela it's like 2011. And then she's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna give you one full year to try this music thing out. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't work, forget it. You need to find a job, you need to help me out in the house. I feel it cool. Me and my niggas, Vele, we do the thing. We hustle, we hustle, we hustle, we hustle. I know that's tough because you need finance. We don't know nothing about management, PR, what, what. We just think you need to make a song, do a video, and then the fo- the fame will just follow up. Yeah. Like you know? Most people. Yeah. I, but now we learned. Eventually, we started learning that there's something called a compiler. This is the person you send the song to. Yeah. We send the song, but the song's not playing. Now, you know, we're going through the industry challenges yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And eventually, from those industry challenges, my homies now are, are, are lacking the spirit because they just feel like there's just too much to do in the industry. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, boys, let's go, let's go, let's go. So we, we try pushing for like a further year, and things just don't come together. I So my boys just lose spirit. And I'm just like, look, boys, I feel like I'm the only one who's putting the action and the and the passion in this thing you know mm, mm, mm. so i you know what? but at that time you, you must have understood that you know the money wasn't coming in and you know that's why people are sort of slacking or you just like guys this is a dream you know let's push this what was your mind mindset like that at that time you know when you're passionate like the one thing that keeps you going is the the possibilities and the potential mm. when you see the potential of the outcome that's the that's the thing that just keeps you driven mm. and it keeps pushing you to make making things happen you know okay. so that was me the whole time as yeah. much as we didn't have the money and stuff whenever we play on metro whenever we play wherever and people showed us love i'd just be like look guys we're like this close to break yeah okay. let's just keep fighting mm. and the boys would just be like yo yeah and i'm sure you, you got tired of just motivating people you know you know it got to a point where we sat down with the guys and i was like look guys okay i'm at a point where i feel like you guys are not committed anymore it's either you guys keep pushing with me or i just do my own thing okay and then the guys were like look man hey yeah this is a bit difficult to watch <laughs> so i was like i okay no it's cool guys i understand Mm. Me and I'm just gonna do my own thing. So at that point, I just decided, you know what? Well, I make beats. That's my strongest point. Let me just start with being a producer. I'm just gonna produce with niggas. And eventually, I'm just gonna build up and then find my way into the industry.